Welcome to uh, Plate Tectonics Part 3. And we're going to continue on with the Plate Tectonics Lecture and look at convergent boundaries. And in, when you notice the um, animation of the block diagram, you'll notice that the convergent boundary basically means that uh, one tectonic plate is colliding with another tectonic plate. There are three types of uh, convergent boundary uh, interactions. Uh, ocean to continent convergence, ocean to ocean convergence, and continent to continent convergence. And so we're going to explore each one of the uh, interactions between these convergent boundaries. And what we'll find is that there are specific types of landforms uh, that are related to each one of the interactions of the convergent boundary. So in the first convergent boundary, we'll take a look at the ocean to continent convergence. And if you look at the diagram uh, to your left, it's listed as A, B, C, and D. And the A uh, characterizes um, the hinge point or the point at which one plate is uh, converging with another plate. And again, in this example, it's ocean to continent. And typically at A, we'll form what we call a trench. And a trench is a deep depression that forms on the ocean floor and again, marks the hinge point in which one plate, in this case, is moving beneath another plate. There are trenches all over the ocean floor. In fact, some of the trenches uh, are so deep that scientists even have a hard problem even um, accurately uh, getting the uh, correct depth at a trench. And then if you look at B, uh, we have the ocean plate now moving beneath the continental plate. So the ocean plate is being forced uh, to move beneath the continental plate. And now we're going to use the term called subduction. And we would say that the ocean plate is subducting beneath the continental plate, meaning that the ocean plate is moving beneath the continent plate. Now you ask, well, why doesn't the continent uh, plate, in this case, move uh, beneath the ocean plate? And the answer to that is by physics, heavy items tend to sink and lighter items seem to, uh, seem to float. And in this case, the ocean plate is much more dense uh, than the continental plate. So by the laws of physics, uh, the ocean plate then subducts beneath the continental plate. So as we discussed uh, during metamorphic rocks, the oceanic plate will reach a depth of about 150 kilometers below the Earth's surface. And it reaches conditions at which temperatures and pressures are high enough to begin melting the ocean plate. And upon melting, the ocean plate will develop uh, copious amounts of magma. And magma being liquid now is less dense than the surrounding rock material. So the magma will have a tendency to begin to rise uh, towards the surface. And this is really analogous to putting a beach ball uh, in a swimming pool, for example. So if you're sitting at the bottom of the pool uh, trying to hold a beach ball, the beach ball will want to rise to the surface because the air in the beach ball, of course, is less dense uh, than the surrounding water. So the magma behaves the same way with respect to its density. So as magma rises, you can see as the magma is rising and rising, at some point, the magma may reach um, um, a position below the Earth's surface in which it completely solidifies. And what we've learned with igneous rocks is magma that cools below the Earth's surface, in the case of this magma plume where my arrow is, then we're going to see um, um, intrusive type igneous rocks. And of course, these are rocks that have cooled below the Earth's surface. If the magma makes it to the surface, <clears throat> we're going to uh, see where the rocks or the magma is extruded as lava flows on the surface. And types of uh, landforms then would be volcanoes. And so typically along the margin of the continent under an ocean to continent convergence um, will produce a series of volcanoes and we call this a volcanic arc system. So where D here shows a series of volcanoes uh, in the chain. So where is there a good example of an ocean to continent convergence with a volcanic arc associated with it along the margin of the continent? Well, if you look at the bottom of your slide, a great example would be the Oregon and Washington coastline. Another example would be uh, the Andes Mountains on the west coast of South America. So this is a satellite image of the Pacific Northwest of the United States, in which you can see the state of Washington here, 
the state of Oregon here, and then you see Northern California uh, right in this area here. And what you notice is a huge chain of volcanoes. And each one of these dots represent a, a volcano. And this is part of the Cascade Mountain Range. And these volcanoes are, are very young geologically. They're roughly between 30 and 50 million years old. Uh, some of these volcanoes are still very active. You might recognize this volcano uh, here in the southern part of Washington State, Mount St. Helens, which had a, a, uh, an eruption. I think it was um, uh, May of 1980. Mount Rainier, which is just um, east of Seattle, which Seattle is right there, Mount Rainier, uh, is somewhat becoming active. And even our own volcano down in the northern part of California, Mount Shasta, is beginning to show activity. So these uh, Cascade uh, volcanoes are alive and well and are a result of a, of a convergent boundary where we have an ocean to continent convergence. So up here would be the model uh, for the um, Washington and Oregon coast. And here we have the ocean plate then subducting beneath the continental plate. Magma is rising. And you can see on the map, we have the volcanic arc system here, which is exactly analogous uh, to the Cascade mountain range. And NAP is the North American plate. And then here is the Pacific plate. Let's look at ocean to ocean plate convergence. And here we have a similar situation as we did in ocean to continent, but in this case, we now have an ocean plate uh, converging with another ocean plate. So just like the previous um, ocean to continent, the ocean to ocean will develop a trench and the trench is the hinge point then where one plate is subducting beneath another plate. So in this case, we have this ocean plate subducting beneath this ocean plate. And you ask why, um, you know, which ocean plate is going to subduct because they're both really the same density. And when you look at an older plate, a plate that's been an older ocean plate that's been around longer and was able to cool longer and become more dense, it's typical that the older ocean plate will subduct beneath the younger ocean plate. And so again, as the ocean plate subducts, it reaches a depth where uh, conditions of pressure and temperature begin to melt the plate, producing copious amounts of magma. The magma being less dense will rise, and at some point the magma will solidify below the Earth's surface. And we produce uh, intrusive igneous rocks in the lithosphere and the crust, some of the magma may make it to the surface. And in this case, uh, we would have uh, islands uh, that would pop out on the ocean floor. In some cases, the islands would make their way above sea level. And we would call this then an island arc system. So an island arc system is a system of volcanoes produced from an ocean to ocean plate convergence, a volcanic arc system is a system of volcanoes found on the margin of a continent. Good examples of an ocean to ocean plate convergence would be the Aleutian Islands, uh, which are islands just off the coast of Alaska. And then the island of Japan would be a very good example of an arc type volcanic system. This slide here is a um, aerial view of the ocean floor. And uh, first things to notice is that here's the island of Japan. It's an arc system. Here are islands off of Japan, more of an arc system there. We come into Indonesia, arc system, arc system. And what's very interesting is right in the ocean floor here, we have one of the deepest trenches uh, on the Earth's surface, and this is known as the Mariana Trench. And so given the position of this trench, it's easy to decipher which uh, part of the ocean plate is subducting beneath the other part of the ocean plate. And that would be because we have island arc systems on this side of the trench, and we don't have any island arc systems on this side of the trench, then it would be reasonable that this plate is subducting beneath this plate. And so this plate is moving in this direction, and it's subducting underneath this plate, producing these different island arc systems. So once the mechanics behind ocean to ocean convergence was understood, 
uh, geologists would uh, comb the ocean floor and find a series of island arc systems all over, which now fits that pattern of ocean to ocean convergence. The last convergent boundary we will look at is the continent to continent conversion. And so in this case of convergence, uh, we have two continent plates that are converging and colliding. And in this case, we have a situation in which the continental crust is the same density. So we basically have competing densities. And so as the two continental plates uh, collide with competing densities, it forms, it has a tendency to form a mountain range at the collision point between the two, um, um, the two uh, continental uh, uh, crust material. And typically what could happen is that the uh, uh, plate beneath the continental crust will just basically break off and descend and uh, be assimilated uh, into the, into the uh, mantle. So if we come back up to the mountain range, we know that uh, there's collision going on between the, con the two continental crusts because of the amount of metamorphism that takes place uh, within the continental crust. And as two continents collide, it creates a high uh, concentration of high temperature and uh, um, high pressure areas. And this comes under regional metamorphic type zones that are produced along uh, the mountain range. And so a great example of a continent to continent convergence uh, would be the Himalaya mountains. And the Himalaya mountains represent some of the youngest mountains on earth. So this is a very active uh, area on earth of collision. In fact, I believe Mount Everest, I believe at about 29,000 feet, um, um, exists in the Himalayas. Here's a picture of uh, the continent India about 50 million years ago. And here you see the spreading ridge out here creating new ocean floor. And as we indicated, continents go along for the ride. So as new ocean floor is being produced at the spreading center at this divergent boundary uh, over the last 50 million years, it has now pushed India up towards uh, the Asian continent. And you can see or envision that over the last 50 million years, this ocean basin uh, located right here is slowly shrinking and shrinking to the point where now in this block diagram, India comes in contact with the Eurasian uh, uh, continent and then produces the Himalaya mountains right in here. Now the last boundary we'll look at are transform boundaries. And transform boundaries is where we have plate material sliding or grinding past one another. And typically in a transform boundary, um, about 95% of all transform boundaries exist on the ocean floor. There's really only two uh, areas on earth in which the transform boundary has continental material sliding past one another. And one location would be the San Andreas Fault where we live in California and then the Alpine Fault in New Zealand. And for the rest of the transform type movement, again, found dominantly on the ocean floor. So typically on the ocean floor, uh, the transform boundaries will show what we call offset spreading ridges, meaning that uh, as the spreading ridge crosses the transform boundary, because of the motion of the transform boundary, the spreading ridge will basically separate and show what we call offset. And in, on the ocean floor, transform boundaries connect spreading ridges throughout the Earth's crust. I'll be showing you some pictures of that. And again, uh, separates various sections of oceanic ridges. So here is a block diagram showing a section or a piece of the ocean floor. And clearly you can see a divergent boundary here. And then over here, you see another divergent boundary and you have to envision that at one time, this divergent boundary was at one time connected to this divergent boundary, but now it has been separated by the transform movement of a transform boundary. And so this point of the spreading ridge and this point of the spreading ridge, uh, we would call that the offset. So let me repeat that again. So offset basically represents the distance between the separation of uh, the spreading ridge here and the spreading ridge here in this case. 
And what's unique in terms of the mechanics behind a spreading ridge and transform boundary relationship is not only are you making new ocean floor uh, along this divergent boundary spreading ridge, but you're also allowing it to move through the transport or, or transform uh, motion. So the ocean floor uh, can move pretty fast with this type of mechanics between a divergent boundary being separated by a transform fault. This is a little diagram uh, that kind of shows you an animation of the divergent boundary here and divergent boundary here being offset here by the transform boundary. And you can see where a new ocean floor is being made at the same time undergoing the transform boundary. This aerial uh, photograph is a section of the ocean floor. And recall that we said most transform boundaries are located, 95% of them anyway, are located on the ocean floor. And so you see an example of a divergent boundary here, divergent boundary there, divergent boundary there, divergent boundary there. And you can see where it's been offset by this transform boundary there, transform boundary there, and transform boundary there. And typically when you look at the ocean floor as a whole, uh, you see in fact that the ocean floor is um, um, characterized by numerous divergent boundaries being offset by transform boundaries. That brings us to a transform boundary on um, the uh, continent. And in this case, we're gonna look at the west coast of California, and we're gonna look at the San Andreas Fault. And the San Andreas Fault, if you look at the San Andreas Fault in the southern part, and you come up to, to the uh, Gulf of California, you see that you have a trans or a divergent boundary here, divergent boundary there, divergent boundary there, and it's being separated by a series of transform faults. And once the transform um, uh, motion and fault uh, makes its way onto the continent, now it, it translates into a full transform type boundary uh, that moves uh, through the um, southern part of California the eastern part of Los Angeles, east of Los Angeles, comes up through the Carrizo Plain, through the San Joaquin Valley area, uh, actually on the west side of the San Joaquin Valley area, comes up through here and then it exits um, um, San Francisco Bay area and comes back out into the ocean and then goes back into a type of fault system that is offsetting different uh, divergent boundaries, divergent boundary here, divergent boundary there, and divergent boundary there. And what's interesting is if you look at Los Angeles, it's located on the Pacific plate. And if you look at uh, San Francisco, it is uh, situated on the North American plate. And of course, Bakersfield is clearly on the North American plate. So if we were again allowed to uh, spend our time on this earth for another 5 million years or more, we would find that uh, Los Angeles would be moving in the north direction over time. San Francisco would be moving in the southern direction over time. And at one point, Los Angeles and San Francisco uh, would be connected, which would bring up an interesting situation because at this point, the Los Angeles uh, Dodgers would be civil right or city rivals uh, to the San Francisco uh, Giants. This next slide is an animation slide that looks at the evolution of the Sandres Fault, meaning when did the Sandres Fault begin? Uh, when did California begin to actually slip under the transform motion? And uh, this research on the Sandres Fault in terms of how old it is and, and, and the origin of the Sandres Fault uh, was done by a, a work uh, by a, a famous geologist at UCSB named Tanya Atwater. And uh, she was a very talented, uh, very smart geologist, and she researched uh, the evolution of the San Andreas Fault. And so this animation you're going to see shows the origin of the San Andreas Fault. So you have to acclimate your eyes uh, to the, to the, uh, to the uh, um, animation uh, picture here. And this would be California right here, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. Over here is the timeline and this would be 40 million years, 30, 20, 10, and then zero would be the uh, current present day to date. So I'm gonna uh, press the play button and I want you to watch uh, the animation 
And I want you to watch when um, uh, California begins to uh, make its slide. And at the point in which California starts to slide and behave more as a transform boundary, look over at the timeline and uh, see if you can uh, identify or characterize uh, when that takes place, uh, thus giving the origin and the age of the San Andreas Fault. So I'm going to press the play button. Comes the play button, and it begins. We're at uh, 30 million years coming up here, and we're at uh, 25 million, 20 million, 15, 10, and it's making its way to the current configuration. So now you see California in its present form. So let's watch it again. And this time I want you to look right at 16 million years ago. And at that point, you should see California begin to um, slide under the transform um, uh, fault. And right there, it begins to slide now. And again, so the San Andreas Fault is just about uh, 16 million years ago um, in terms of how old it is. Now, one of the um, conclusions that uh, Tanya Atwater concluded with respect to how this fault formed on the uh, continent was the fact that uh, if you watch, we're going to watch the video one more time, and you're going to see, in fact, I'll just push the button here. And what you should now uh, be observing is that a series of spreading centers are now being subducted beneath the North American plate. And this subduction of divergent boundaries beneath the North American plate gives rise to a transform motion uh, that now moves, um, you know, California uh, uh, north and south. So we'll watch it one more time because it's fun. And there's California. This is an aerial view of the Sandra's Fault up near the uh, Carrizo Plain area, just um, uh, I think it'd be west of Taft, California, of course. And here you see the slice uh, coming down here, uh, indicating the fault zone of the Sandra's Fault. And to the east is the North American plate. To the west is the Pacific place. And this is a view north. If you ever get a chance to fly from, uh, say, Los Angeles to San Francisco or vice versa, usually the pilots will fly right over the trend of the Sandra's Fault. And it's a um, really good way to get a, uh, an aerial view uh, looking at the Sandra's Fault. This slide, uh, I like this slide because it shows the current configuration of the um, uh, continents. And it shows you um, um, the different uh, plate boundaries. And from knowing the plate boundaries, one can get an idea of how the plates are all jockeying for a position uh, as they kind of move around the uh, earth. For example, uh, for example, um, we have the red is divergent boundaries, blues are convergent boundaries, and the yellows are transform boundaries. And if we take the Pacific plate uh, specifically, we can see down here it's marked by converge or I'm sorry, divergent boundaries in the south, which means that new ocean floor is being made here, which is slowly pushing the Pacific plate towards the north. And then we would say what's well, happening to the other side of the Pacific plate. And you can see up here that these are convergent boundaries. In fact, that's an ocean to ocean convergence there. And the um, uh, uh, convergent boundaries where this material is being subducted would be the consuming side of the plate. And so we have new plate material being made here, and then we have um, a plate being consumed in the north of the Pacific plate. And of course, right here is where the plate is just sliding past the North American plate, and this would mark the area of the San Andreas Fault.